Welcome to the Blessings of Jesus. In today's message, The Power of Purity, Dr. McLuhan teaches how purity increases our ability to understand God and to see His image in the people we meet. The world is obsessed with purity. People want pure soap, pure food, pure fruit, and above all else, pure water. It's nothing more important than pure water. Nobody wants to drink dirty or contaminated water. As many as two billion people every day drink water that is dirty. Huge consequences to their health. We are so grateful in our country for the most part of living and being able to have access to good drinking water. A recent report warned, however, that even the best bottled water has all sorts of contaminants in it, microparticles of plastic that are not good for our health. Now, having access to good drinking water is one of the most basic building blocks of living a healthy life. If that message resonates with you, then you have positioned your heart to understand the blessing that Jesus offers us today. <clears throat> having access to a pure heavenly father is the foundation for experiencing the spiritual purity that Jesus offered his followers. All of their lives, Jewish people had been taught that God cannot be seen. To see him would bring instant death. Not even Moses or Elijah were allowed to see the face of God. And Jesus shows up on the shore of Galilee drops a radical spiritual thought. He said, I have come to open the way for everyone to see God. Just think how radical, how shook up people must have been by this idea. Blessed, Jesus said, are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. What incredibly credible words these are that Jesus spoke. That is news worth spreading and today we will explore this radical idea. And first, it means that God can never act in a hateful or an impure way. He can never take personal offense or revenge out of offense for something that he is personally offended by. I'm telling you, I just like to know that. That's changed my life. This immediately separates Father God from all the gods of the religions. Indian gods require people to walk on fire and to mutilate themselves. The Greek gods came down and did unholy things with humans. In reaction to Alexander the Great, who claimed to be the son of God, and he did clearly say he was the son of God, Muslims made an even worse error Islam teaches that God cannot have a living, intimate relationship with the ones who were created by his very own hands. Pastor Margaret and I have talked with people who have had a father or a mother who have cursed them out almost every day of their life. You're no good. Could you imagine that being said to you? You will never amount to anything. You're a shame to our family. We've heard this said to us so many times. People said, my father said that to me every day. How can you possibly have a good concept of God when that has been said to you? If you heard these words growing up, this blessing from Jesus is especially for you. Many people, especially Muslims, live in the fear of what God will do to them. They live without the sense of God's approval on their life. You're living without the sense of God's approval upon your life. We invite you to hear these words and to receive them. All that changed when Jesus was baptized. Three times in the course of his life, people heard an audible voice of God saying these words, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Said over Jesus no less than three times. One day it occurred to me, if Jesus needed to hear these powerful words, how much more do you or I need to hear these words? And several years ago, I've shared with you that a prophet came up to me, laid her hands on my back and neck, and just simply said, you are my beloved son 
with whom I am well pleased. She was speaking on behalf of the Father into my life. At that moment, something about my understanding of God shifted. The holiness of God has become one of the greatest reasons to love him and not to fear him. Fear guiding, uh, the holiness of God used to, used to terrify me. That uh, He's so holy and I'm so unholy, how can I even think about being in his presence? But I came to understand that holiness is what makes God attractive because he can only behave in holy ways towards you and to me. God has bound himself with an everlasting covenant. It's one of the greatest statements of the Old Testament called with an everlasting love to love his followers unconditionally. This is the promise that Jesus made to his followers. He came to make this promise possible. When our time comes to pass on, he said, he will present us to the Father with these powerful words from the book of Revelation. No longer will there be any curse. Aren't you so glad? The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. And listen to these words. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. (laughs) Revelation chapter 22, verse 3 and 4. What wonderful words these are. This is the inspiration behind what Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, or blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Followers of Jesus already have the name of God imprinted on our forehead. Now, you can't see it, but God already does. Ask God to help you believe the teaching that I'm sharing with you today. The Apostle John who appears to have understood the love of God more than most people, certainly in his time, wrote these words. Dear friends, now we are children of God. Now, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in himself or herself, purifies himself just as he is pure. What a powerful invitation. It's an invitation to purity that is possible as we make our way through this life. Purity is the filter through which Father God invites us to pour the hurtful, broken things that have been said to us. Pour it through the filter of purity and let Father take it out of your life. Purity is the process through which God removes contamination of the world and our own sinful choices. Jesus invites us to walk with him as he removes removes the impurity of our lives. Purity is the process through which Jesus changes us. He changes how we talk. And you remember when you used to curse and had nothing good to say, Cursed this and cursed that and and used God's name to condemn just about everybody you saw. And now blessings flow out of your mouth. It's the process of purity. Your mouth has become an instrument through which people can be blessed. Somebody said to me one time, how come you're always saying bless God? I said, son, because it's better than cursing God. And my language has changed. I hope your language is changing as you mature in the maturity process with the Father. Changes how we think. We used to have all sorts of thoughts, thoughts of self-destruction, thoughts of, of being no good and feeling no good because it was said to us, of having poor judgment under pressure. God begins to change how we think. That's the whole point of Paul in Romans chapter 12, that our minds are renewed by transformation, the changing of the way we think about life. It's how we act. We used to act primarily in our own self-interest, but with the presence of the purifying presence of Holy Spirit in our lives, we begin to think about others. Paul would go on to write, think about others as more important than yourself. What a tremendous ambition that is in life to have this kind of change take place. It changes how we react to the circumstances of life. We used to react in our own self-interest, 
But uh, we used to react with a doubt about people and cynicism and skepticism. Giving people the benefit of the doubt didn't come naturally, but as our hearts change, how we react to people and circumstances takes on a whole new meaning. Now, both men and women need to possess purity. The hidden sins of both men and women need the purifying presence of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I think men think of themselves as more sinful than women. I assure you it's not true. And if it's a feeling, it's a lie that the devil has placed upon you. Every one of us needs the purifying presence where there are hidden sins or obvious sins. Men and women alike need this process in their lives. In the natural, our, our way of thinking is influenced by the spirit of fear, shame, and control. And those uh, spirits are behind that so much of the deviation that takes place in our life keeps us from living a holy life because those spirits talk to us all the time. If the spirit of shame is talking to you, I command that spirit to stop speaking to you right now. The need to control, I release you from the need to control. And the fear that this and that will happen to you, we always expect the worst case to happen. I lift that off of you, that God would bless you with a life that's under his control. And you feel his honoring of you. And fear is going out of your life because love is perfected. When fear is gone, the presence of love calls fear out of our life. I break these off of you. In the before books, that is the Old Testament, they're filled with words of hope. Do you remember these words from Solomon? Keep your heart with all vigilant, for from it flows the springs of life. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 are released to you. Life-giving words to flow from you. Life-giving thoughts. So as we guard our heart, uh, then out of our mouth comes the blessing that God wants us to have and to enjoy the king's of God's people were described as having a divided heart or an undivided heart or a whole heart. And King David is described as being a man after God's own heart. What a tremendous compliment that was paid to him despite all of the things he experienced in life. Prophet Jeremiah said, on behalf of God, I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and for the good of their children after them. Isn't that a tremendous promise? And as our hearts are purified, it has an influence upon our children, our great-grandchildren, and the generations to come. Uh, Jesus came to release to us this new heart, to make us walk in the ways, to make it possible for us to walk in the ways. And in the thinking of God, to the grandparents who are watching today, to parents and grandparents, I just... Release to you the blessing of walking in the purity of heart that will bless you and not only you, your children forever. A sure way to bring blessing into the lives of our children and grandchildren is to allow Jesus to purify our hearts. Uh, you don't want to be known as a grumpy old man. <laughs> you want your children to be so happy when they see you and call you whatever affectionate name uh, grandchildren call you. And I've been called some interesting names. I never reacted to any of them because I knew where they were coming from, even if they couldn't say names the way one might have liked to. In time, they will say it. And what a joy it was to be on a call with our grandchildren over the weekend while we were away and have them speak to us and recognize us. Prophet Ezekiel made this powerful promise on behalf of God. I will give you a new heart. And I'll put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. Don't you want that kind of a heart? We just break stoniness out of our hearts, hardness out of our hearts. Uh, God, come and work on our lives today. You were raised with a hard dad or a hard mom. I just, I just say that's not from Father God. We release that. We release you from that expectation. As your heart softens uh, towards God, you will be able to forgive your mom or your dad. Jesus fulfilled this promise, promise made by prophet Ezekiel. Jesus came to die for us on the cross that, so that the sins and the impurities in our life can be washed away. 
Who wants the blessing of having your sin washed away and impurities and all kind, wrong concepts of God taken out of your heart? Uh, Father God, purify our hearts. Help us to see how beautiful you really are and want to be in a loving, caring relationship with us. This is why Jesus was able to say, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. Now, what does this mean? At the most basic level, it means that when we close our eyes in death, we open them in the presence of God. Very few people live with that reality. Uh, people say that uh, we won't know until we get to the other side and God's judged us. That, that, that's, when you receive Jesus as your Savior, that's all done. You, you, you close your eyes here and you open your eyes, you're in the presence. You see God immediately. Uh, that will be physically. We will behold physically the face of Jesus for all of eternity. But I believe that Jesus is offering us much more than just waiting until we die to go to heaven and see him. Have you ever tried to solve a complicated problem? You just can't figure it out. Then someone comes along, try this or that, or have you thought of this? And you do it, and this complicated problem is solved just like that. And when that happens, you might say, I get it. I see it. I understand what went wrong. And by that, you mean that you understood. And so when we see God, it means we understand God. It's something happens that we had no idea. And all of a sudden, a light goes on for us. And we see what we could never see. The purer our hearts and our hands are, the more we understand about the ways of God. Remember Moses said, show me your ways. I want to know your ways. And when we know God's ways, our lives are changed. Our discernment is improved. We become less suspicious of others. We give people the benefit of the doubt. Ungodly thoughts go from us. We see what God sees. We see what God was up to when we were so confused I mean, if you walk through a period of time and you're just completely confused and you thought God wasn't listening and God didn't care, you know how all those thoughts creep into your mind and all of a sudden, ah, oh, that's what you were doing and I didn't see you had my best interest all the time. But there's even more than that. Not only are our eyes open to see what God is doing for us, we begin to see what God is doing in the lives of others I'm telling you, this is perhaps one of the most exciting dimensions. You can see a person who's just, life's completely going the wrong direction, but God reveals to you what he's going to do. You begin to pray and care for that person, Pastor Margaret said to our children, especially our grandchildren, I'm spending more time praying for you than ever before. Uh, you could see the joy on their face as those words came out of her, her. Better than seeing God in our own lives, is seeing God in the lives of others. What a beautiful thing it is to see it, God at work in the lives of our children, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren for some of you in this room who are in that blessed place of life. Our compassion grows as your pastor. I assure you, I see more in you than you see in yourself. I ask God to show me how he sees you and what he is up to in your life. I can tell you, exciting spiritual adventures are in your future as you move forward in the Holy Spirit. But there's even more. And purity opens the door for deeper intimacy with Father God. And moving in supernatural, moving in the supernatural, uh, begins to flow more easily through our hands. God gives us prophetic words to encourage people. He tells us about diseases. He wants to heal through our hands. Every day people write to me, especially our pastors. Sometimes pastors don't know who to turn to to ask for prayer. Of course, we can turn to our church members, but sometimes we like to turn to other pastors. They write to me and share concerns in their lives. Right while we were doing this service, a, a pastor wrote to me from Pakistan saying that... Uh, 
Somebody close to him who'd been prayed for, their, their cancer had just been healed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We just release healing. That same pastor and I are praying for a lady with, with diabetic condition and, and liver disease. And we just say to your liver, function, disease go, kidneys function, heart conditions be healed right now in Jesus' name. Stomach cancers go Right now, somebody has a right knee problem. I command that meniscus to be healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody suffering with joint problems, a hip problem, we command that to be healed in Jesus' name. What a blessing it is that when the power of God flows through us through intimacy with the Father and people to heal, joy that wells up in my heart to receive testimonies of people being healed, and you'll have that joy as you do the same. The psalmist said, who can ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. Psalm 23 and verse 4, we release upon you clean hands and a pure heart through hearing this word. Just the word itself will purify your heart today. We invite you to bring your broken and divided heart to Jesus We invite you to experience the spiritual rebirth that Jesus offers to all. It begins by asking Jesus to forgive you for your sin, for all of the sins that you have committed. Say with me, Jesus, thank you for dying for me in my place on the cross. Pay for my sins. I receive you as my Savior today. Take the hardness out of my heart and replace it with tender and pure heart that you intend for me to have. I want the blessing of seeing and understanding the ways of God. Ask Jesus to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Spend time reading his word and enjoying his presence. If you just receive Jesus as your Savior, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. If you were healed, let us know what God did for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the blessings of Jesus. Father, thank you for making a way to restore pure childlike heart in us through Jesus. Thank you for your great mercy and eyes of love that turn and look at us. Help us to see others with your eyes this week. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.